So picture this. There's two days left on the event banner and you spend the entire month collecting just enough primo gems for 80 rows. And as you sit there with your soft pity, convinced you're getting that event character on next pool, your next row will leave you absolutely speechless. Oh, and now that you're down 14,000 primo gems and addicted to gambling, you're desperately looking for ways to get primo gems fast. And if that's you, you've come to the right place because today we'll be going over 36 ways to get primo gems fast in Genshin Impact, taking you from this to this whilst also ranking them based on time required to complete, total potential gain, ease of access, and many other factors. So be sure to watch to the end of the video because you wouldn't want to miss out on 4960 Primo Gems just because your ADHD ass got bored. And that's all for my intro, so let's begin. Starting off strong with the 6 different offering systems in the game, letting you earn up to a combined 16,795 Primo Gems. These landmarks give you rows and primo gems in exchange for specialty collectibles and sigils, and can be found in every single region in Tevet except for Leeway. The newest one they've added is the Rain Jade Oblation in Leeway. And I know I just said that there were no offering systems in Leeway, and that was true until they decided to announce that they're adding one right as I was about to post my video. So, anyways, the Rain Jade Oblation is this spinny plate thing that can be accessed right here in Chen Yun after you finish your two world quests released in the 4.4 Chengyun expansion. This green spinny disc ball thing takes spirit carps, which are these blue sparkly balls that can be found all over Chengyun, and has 10 levels, requiring 5 blue fishes per level for 50 in total. That being said, in order to unlock all gacha related rewards from this, you only need to reach level 7 for combined 35 fishes, and in exchange, you will receive 4 standard banner rolls and 2 event banner rolls totaling in 960 Primo Gems worth of rewards. In addition to these rows, along the way to unlocking this, you would also pick up a couple achievements and chests that give you around 100 or so more Primo Gems, putting the Range Aid Oblation in A tier. Out of the 6, the first one you unlock is the Frost Bearing Tree in Dragon Spire. This ice cream looking tree with a rock stuck in it has 12 levels of friendship, with each one needing 10 spiky red rocks to unlock. These crimson agates can be found lying around Dragonspire in chests and puzzles, and with 60 of them, you can unlock all catcher related rewards from it. With a potential gain of 2 event banner rows and 4 standard rows totaling up to 960 primo gems, it may not look worthwhile at first, but given that the interactive map exists, it should not take longer than half an hour to get all of them. Coupled with the 35 primo gems you can get from achievements related to the tree, 995 primo gems for half an hour of playtime doesn't seem all that bad. A tier. The next offering system you unlock doesn't come until you get to the chasm at the end of Leeway. The Luminstone Adjuvant Enhancement can be found right here after you finish the introductory quest to the chasm and has 10 levels, each requiring 8 Lumen Spars, with levels 2, 6, and 8 requiring 1 Luminstone Ore in addition to the 8 Lumen Spars. To unlock all catch related rewards from this, you need to reach level 8 for a total of 64 Lumen Spars and 3 Luminstone Ores. Similar to the Spiky Tree, the total potential gain is 2 event banner rows and 4 standard rows, A tier. Now this next one is where things get interesting. With a total potential gain of 4960 primo gems worth of rewards, the fox tree and the zuma may be one of the things in this game that rewards you the most just for turning in stuff that you already have by playing the game. Taking 25 electro sigils per level, the sacred sakura favor has 50 levels requiring 1250 sigils to fully unlock all rewards. Once you reach level 50, you have received 20 standard banner rows, 10 event banner rows, 4 shrines of death keys, as well as a bunch of billets and new abilities. With the game giving you electro sigils every time you open a chest or upgrade a statue in an Azuma, coupled with the fact you can't get anything with it until you've completed the tree, the fox tree may be one of the easiest ways to get primo gems without actively trying to level it up. S tier. And now that we're done with 112 of the video, if you're enjoying the video so far and want more videos like this, do subscribe and leave a comment because doing so 100% automatically ensures you win your next 50-50, and it will also make up for my lack of validation as a kid. After you finish throwing sigils at the fox tree, the next offering system you unlock is the Tree of Dreams in Sumeru. This onion looking plant can be unlocked after completing Dream Nursery in the World Quest series Arianka Part 2 and has the worst deal when compared to the other offering systems that take sigils. That being said, it still offers the same amount of rewards as the Fox Tree and Nazuma, also having 50 levels whilst taking 35 instead of 25 sigils per level. Upon completion of the entire onion tree, 
you will also receive the achievement Combination of the Great Dreams for an additional 20 Primo Gems, making it one of the best ways to get Primo Gems free exploration despite its relatively high leveling cost. S tier. Also in Sumeru, the Gift of Amrita is another offering system in the game. This one on the other hand takes plumes of purifying light, which can be collected through various puzzles in the northern desert of Sumeru. With 6 levels, each awarding 100 Primo Gems each, this equates out to 36 yellow flowers for 600 Primo Gems, making it a decent way to get Primo Gems instead of wishes in case you want to spend them buying resin. B tier. The latest offering system added to the game is Fontaine's Fountain of Lucine's Accolade. No wanting to feel left out, this glorified wishing well also takes sigils in exchange for rewards, requiring 30 hydro sigils per level. However, as a 4.3, only 40 of the 50 levels have been released, totaling in rewards worth 4,320 Primo Gems, with 2 standard wishes and 2 event banner wishes yet to be released. Completing the fountain as of right now requires 1200 hydro sigils and requires Chapter 4 Act 1 to be complete. S tier. Now that we're done with the offering systems, the next two ways we'll be going over may be the least time consuming in the game, and yet a large percent of people still don't do them because they're just too damn lazy. The daily commission system in Genshin has the highest potential gain out of all of the methods today, with a theoretically unlimited supply of Primo Gems. All you need to do is log in every day and spend 50 minutes playing the same old, boring and repetitive missions over and over and over again. And with only 60 Primo Gems a day, it's understandable why some people won't even give it the 50 minutes needed, and by saving yourself a couple of hours over the month, you would have missed out on 1800 Primo Gems. But we all know that doing the same thing over and over again gets boring fast, and Mihoyo knows that too because in version 4.1, they've added the Adventure Encounter system as an alternative to completing daily commissions, letting you complete all 4 missions with a single click of a button, placing it solidly in S tier. Another thing people often overlook is the daily check-in. To get to the daily check-in page, all you need to do is click on this thing in the Hoyer Lab or straight up Google it. When compared to the other methods we'll be going over later, the 60 Primo Gems a month may not look very enticing, but given that all it takes is to Google and claim it, something you can do whilst on your phone while waiting for the game to load, it's really hard to put it any lower on the list. And if you didn't even know this existed or were just too lazy to do it, the first time you check in, you get an extra 100 Primo Gems instantly, so there isn't really a reason not to do it. C tier. With the addition of Fontaine in 4.0, 5 out of the 7 regions in Tevet have been released, and with that, 5 out of the 7 statues of the 7 have also been added to the game. And aside from healing your characters, these statues also offer rewards for turning in Oculi, with each region differing in Oculi required and rewards. Out of the 5 released, Mondstadt and Liwei are currently tied for giving the least amount of Primo Gems, at 90 Primo Gems for completing all 10 levels. With these two statues only giving one sixth of the number of Primo Gems that you can get from other statues, there isn't really a reason to complete these apart from the stamina gain. And although that may come in helpful later, it's not going to help you get the event character you want right now. So D tier. The statues for Inazuma, Sumeru, and Fontaine on the other hand, while still only having 10 levels, give way better rewards in comparison, with each of them giving 60 Primo Gems per level instead of 10. This totals to 1620 Primo Gems for completing all 10 levels in all 3 regions. In addition to the Primo Gem rewards, these statues also give up 5 to 6 Shrine of Depth Keys for completing them, giving you an additional 640 Primo Gems. The only bad thing about these statues in the late game regions is that they need more Oculi to level up with Sumeru and Fontaine needing more than 200 Oculi to max out their levels. B tier. This next one is for the people who keep pulling new characters, but never level them up. To encourage players to level characters up and try different teams, Genshin has this system where you can get standard wishes for ascending characters to level 20, 60, and 80. The only problem with that is they only give out standard wishes, and that's not going to help us get any closer to the event character. The solution to this is to simply roll your standard wishes and use the starters from it to trade for event banners with Paimon's bargains. And with 3 standard wishes per character, and the average player having 10 4 stars that they've never touched, you can probably get up to 450 stardust, which is around 5 event banner rolls. You got See tier. Aside from normal domains that give you artifacts, 
scattered around to vet are also these one-time domains. These domains look pretty much the same as normal ones, but instead of giving artifacts and weapon ascension material, they give primo gems and shrine of death keys. There are currently 23 or so one-time domains in the game, and each one gives you 40 primo gems for completing them. In addition, these 8 domains also give shrine of death keys, boosting the total number of primo gems you can get from this to 1240 primo gems. And sometimes, you can even get a luxurious chest at the end of these domains for 10 extra primo gems. And with most of these domains only taking 5 minutes to complete, this puts one-time domains in A tier. Next on the list, we have the Avengers Handbook. This is where you do a lot of things, like changing your daily commission area, seeing if road bosses have respawned yet, and wait for essential materials you need to come into rotation. Aside from those things, the handbook is also where you access your chapter rewards. There are 9 chapters in total, and these chapters reward primo gems in increasing amounts as you complete them, rewarding up to 900 primo gems along with 2 standard wishes and shrine of death keys for completing all chapters. If you have been playing the game for a decent amount of time already, I would highly recommend you to swing by and complete these tasks because a lot of them are really simple and wouldn't take more than a couple minutes to complete. A tier. Also in the Adventurer's Handbook is the Tour Guide. This page tracks the player's progression in the storyline for Archon Quests and rewards them with one event banner roll for each act completed. And with 26 acts in the game right now, you can get up to 26 event banner rolls. The problem with this, however, is that you need to complete the interlude chapters before you can go and collect the wishes for the Archon Quests that were released after these chapters. So if you have an interlude chapter that's just sitting there on your quest page after you complete most of the Archon Quests, it may be time to go finish it now. B tier. When it comes to events in Genshin, there are mainly three kinds. Firstly, there are the in-game events where you go find, kill, or complete puzzles for primo gems. Then, there are the web events where you go play a 2000 something era flash game for 50 minutes every day of the events for a couple primo gems here and there. And then, there are the raffles slash art contests. With in-game events, Mihiro likes to do large events every now and then during seasonal holidays, while having smaller week-long events between them. These events usually add new gameplay and give large amounts of primo gems, with small events giving around 300 to 1000 primo gems each, and large events giving more than 1000. And at the end of these events, you usually get special new gadgets or weapons that you can keep, making them one of the less repetitive things in Genshin. S tier. The web-based events on the other hand are far more common and you can basically find one ongoing no matter when you log in. These events tend to give less primo gems, hovering around 600 or so if you complete all the content, and they are generally quite easy to complete. So A tier. And with drafts and art contests, let's be honest, we all know you're not gonna win those, F tier. In addition to progressing the story and unlocking new gameplay mechanics, the quests in Genshin also offer a decent amount of primo gems upon completion. There are 4 types of quests in the game right now, with world quests giving the most primo gems, and story quests giving the least. Of the 4 types of quests, the one that people are most familiar with are the Archon quests. These quests progress the storyline and give decent amounts of primo gems at around 100 to 200 primo gems per act. In addition, they also give special achievements, unlock new areas, and give event banner rows. As of right now, there are only 26 Archon Quest acts, meaning that the amount you can gain is limited, however, given how much of the game it unlocks, it's hard to put it any lower. B tier. World quests on the other hand are less consistent when it comes to giving up primo gems, with some of them giving 30 primo gems per quest, and others giving 640 per quest. These quests can be found by talking to non-player characters with blue exclamation marks over their heads, and you can go to Genshin Wiki to choose which one you want to do based on the rewards. And apart from just rewarding primo gems, a lot of these world quests also unlock new explorable areas, gameplay features, and other things that allow you to gain primo gems faster or have an easy time doing so. S tier. After those, we come to the story quest and hangout events. Both of these quests require story keys to unlock, with story quests requiring one key and hangout events requiring two. These keys can be gained upon completing eight daily commissions, meaning that starting a story quest will require two days of playing and the hangout events will require four. With the large amount of time needed to unlock these quests, neither of them are really useful if you're in a pinch and need primo gems fast. With them both only giving 60 primo gems for completing one, you aren't exactly gonna get anywhere fast. If you do decide to go ahead, you'll be able to get 2,400 primo gems for completing all story quests and 620 for all hangout events. C tier. Once you finish off the main Archon and World quests, 
One of the more efficient ways to get Primo Gems is through exploration. Now there are many types of explorations in Genshin, and for most people, the first thing that comes to mind is chest hunting. With thousands of chests in Genshin, and even more puzzle chests, just this alone can keep you occupied for some time, and with them giving 2 to 10 Primo Gems each, you can definitely get a decent number of Primo Gems fast if you prioritize the rarer chests first. To make chest hunting more efficient, you should open the Genshin interactive map and serve the luxurious and precious chests first, collecting all of the high reward chests before moving on to the more common ones. A tier. Another form of exploration is achievement hunting. As achievements in Genshin also give a decent amount of rewards, one way to get Primo Gems fast, especially if you've been blowing through the game, is to go back to previous regions and hunt their achievements. With around 1200 achievements, totaling and rewards worth around 9000 Primo Gems, you'll be able to earn some Primo Gems decently fast, seeing how most of these achievements are just random things that you can get done in a couple of minutes. B tier. Added in version 3.3, the TCG was this low card game that you can play with other players and NPCs in Mondstadt. Tucked away in this low cat cafe, many people would miss this or simply would not know that this existed and by doing so, we'll be missing out on the easiest 1130 Primo Gems in the game. In this cat cafe, there is this cat and by talking to him, you can access your TCG player level. With 10 player levels to unlock, and each one giving 60 Primo Gems, you can get up to 600 Primo Gems just by sitting down and collecting cards. And given that the AR aren't very good at this game, you can cruise through the first few levels pretty quickly, giving you some free easy Primo Gems. But aside from the cat, in the top right corner of your screen is also the TCG Player's Guide, and by completing this guide, you can earn up to an additional 240 Primo Gems for basically no extra work. And by spending a couple hours and completing the TCG part of the game, you have earned 840 Primo Gems, and along with that, an extra 295 Primo Gems for achievements, giving you 1130 Primo Gems, placing it in C tier. If you're good at the game and your characters actually do decent damage, the Spire Abyss may be one of the best ways to sustainably get Primo Gems in Genshin. With floors 9 through 11 resetting twice a month and floor 12 resetting once a month, by completing these 7 floors alone, you will be able to gain up to 600 Primo Gems every month. However, the higher levels do require decently built teams, and if you're as bad as me at the game, then Spiral might not be as profitable for you as it is for others. A tier. Sitting in your gadgets tab is the Serenity Pot, a place where you can build your dream house, level up your character friendship levels, and build questionable things. What's also there is Tubby, and this bird is where you can earn up to 600 Primo Gems from simply asking it to build things for you. Each piece of furniture built in the teapot gives you a set amount of XP which can be used to level up your trust rank with Tubby, and with each level you can get 60 Primo Gems along with some rewards. Usually, leveling up your trust rank takes time, but you can skip most of the waiting by just using the vows of Adepto Speed that they gave you from the start. C tier. Next up, we got a couple of small ones that you should do whenever there's a new patch or update in Genshin. The first thing you want to do when a new patch drops is to go to your mail and collect any maintenance break or patch awards. Usually, you get somewhere between 100 and 500 Primo Gems for these, and just absolutely do this because they do expire after some time, and you wouldn't want to miss out on 500 Primo Gems just because you forgot. Another thing you should do is go look up new Genshin Impact promotion codes for the new patch. These codes can range from giving more and other useless stuff to around 60 to 100 Primo Gems at the high range, and you can usually find them on Google pretty easily, so it's definitely worth the 5 minutes. Another 40 Primo Gems can also be earned by completing the test runs of the event characters during the new patch. These test runs can literally be done in under a minute, so there is no point in saving time and not doing them. If you're still short on Primo Gems after trying all of the methods that we've gone over today, you can consider giving the tutorial section a read, seeing that each page you read gives you one Primo Gem. And if you've never opened it before, it just might give you enough Primo Gems to get that last row you need. But if you're just really lazy and don't want to play the game anymore, you can always take out your credit card and buy the Welcome Moon and the Crystals. And that's all I have for my video, the tier list is here if you want to pause and take a screenshot, and if you can't understand which methods the pictures are for, 
another watch of the video won't hurt much. If you found the video helpful or have any questions, please leave a comment and subscribe because I really want to hit 100k subscribers sometime before I hit 60. So thanks and see you in the next video. Bye.